let's look at the integrations tab. This is where we're going to sync in our Google Classroom or possibly Schoology or Canvas. And that's to bring in our teachers and also bring in our classes that we're going to use inside of Classroom. We will be integrating other learning management systems later, LMSs, but right now these are the three that we have. I'm going to show you how to use Google Classroom, and I will also give you links on where you can link in Schoology and Canvas for those instructions. For Google Classroom, you're going to hit Select, and here we are just going to choose our teachers. That's the only OU that we want is teachers. So I'm going to deselect everybody else. I'm going to select teachers, and I'm going to hit save. I'm going to say yes, and now what's going to happen? It's going to go through my G Suite account. It's going to look at all of my active Google classes, and it's going to compare the teachers in those classrooms to that OU. If they match, they will bring them in. And that's all it takes. And now I will have Google Classes right here with students in them. And under Users, I have my teachers. And once again, I can sort this out, out here. And I can say the source is Classroom. And you can see the teachers that we've pulled in from Classroom. Very easy and simple to use. We're going to go back to Settings now. And now we're going to go to our next tab, which is the Blocked URLs tab. In this tab, we can add different websites that we want to use that will be blocked on the Chromebooks 24-7, 365. This is to be used in conjunction with your content filter. Now, it will not override your content filter. If you have it blocked in your content filter, it will always be blocked on your Chromebooks. If you put it in here and block it, it's also blocked on your Chromebooks 24-7, 365, like I said before. It's whatever the stronger um, permission set that you have here. If you allow it in your content filter, but you have it blocked here, it's still going to be blocked on your Chromebooks. Very easy to add a URL if you want to. You can just go Add. And I happen to know that I want to block MajorLeagueBaseball.com, so I'm going to type in MLB.com. I can put any notes in there I want to. And I can hit Save. And now Major League Baseball is now blocked on all of my Chromebooks. Any of my true students try to get to MLB.com on their Chromebook, it's not going to work. Okay. The next tab we're going to look at is kind of going to be in conjunction with our system tab, and this is the IP ranges tab. In this tab, you're going to put your IP ranges that are outward facing. In other words, you're going to go to any of those tabs that you might go to um, IP ranges if you went to on your Chromebooks, if you went to whatsmyip.com and you saw the IP, range, IP addresses that came up there. That's what you're going to put in here. This is a way that we use to authenticate and keep privacy issues going when a student's Chromebook is at home. And this is for mostly for schools that are one-to-one -one with your Chromebooks and the Chromebooks travel home. What we do, and we add this in conjunction with the system tab here, and we use it here with this exclude teacher tools for outside IP ranges. If I were to turn that on and hit save, now what happens is any device that is outside of this IP range will be blocked and will not a teacher will not be able to manip manipulate them. It's like that student is absent from the class automatically. Okay? So, I mean, if we turn that off then, no matter where the student is, uh, according to their IP range, the teacher will still be able to manipulate their device. Now I'll show you later on in teacher tools when I'm doing the teacher training on how a teacher can exclude a student from their class and mark them absent so they're not manipulating. Like if they're in a different class or if they are at home sick, we can exclude them from that class by just simply deselecting them. 
But this way, if you use the exclude teacher tools for outside IP address ranges, this automatically takes any student that's outside of your IP range that you put here and marks them as absent. Okay, let's go back to this systems tab. Right here is where you're gonna choose your time zone. It is very important that you do choose the correct time zone for wherever you're at. I happen to be on the East Coast, so I'm gonna choose New York. And this is the setting of the boxes where I can allow my teachers to schedule the classes. And if automatically, what that automatically does if they schedule the class is start the class. That's all it does is automatically start the class. That's it. That way they don't have to manually start the class when they open up teacher tools, the class will already be running. That's all it's gonna do. Once I have that setting done, I hit save. Very easy to do. Then our very last setting that we have on the last tab here is called school schedule. Now this um, little calendar is, this is the times that a teacher can start a class in teacher tools. Now you might look at our schedule here, looking at it saying 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. Well, that's all day except for one minute. That's exactly right. This is our demo account that we use, and we have lots of people worldwide that use it. So we keep it going 24 seven if we can. So what we do here, if you wanna change it at all, and what I recommend is you change it to 10 minutes before your first bell in your district to 10 minutes afterwards. So I'm just gonna click on 12 a.m. here. And let's say Aaron County Public Schools actually starts school at 7.25. So I'm gonna set this to 7.15 a.m. And my last class or last school in my district, its spell is at 3.30 in the afternoon. So I'm actually gonna set it to 3.40 in the afternoon. Okay. Now, I can even choose things. If you're a four day a week school district, all you have to do is remove that one day from there and it'll only schedule it for four days. If you have any flex days, you can turn those off or early release days, you can turn off Wednesdays and you can set all your Wednesdays to early release or whatever. But when I'm ready to do this, I can click all and I'm gonna hit save. And you see now all of my days have changed from 7.15 a.m. to 3.40 p.m. And that's when a teacher can actually start a class in teacher tools. These are standard months. If I know, like I know that January 1st, we are not gonna hold class, I can click on January 1st and I can delete it. And now no teacher will be able to start a class January 1st. I can go back to my previous month and I can do, oh, on the 24th, we're gonna do an early release day we're actually gonna release at noon. And I can change that to 12 o'clock p.m. or 12.10 and I can say save and it's only gonna do it for this occurrence. And there we go, now I've got school on Christmas Eve from 7.15 to noon. And man, that would make lots of students mad if they did that in my school, Oof. Okay, so that is the school schedule tab. Now our teachers can only start their classes from 7.15 a.m. to 3.40 p.m. most days. The last tab we're gonna look at here in the settings area is our permissions tab. Now permissions, you're gonna say, well, why do I need to grant permissions? Well, if you don't grant permissions to your teachers on what they can do in the system, when they go log in to securely, they're not gonna see anything. They're gonna see a blank page and they get kind of cranky about that. So we have to give them permission to what they want to do. Now this is best practices as I have it set up here except for one button. If you notice, we're broken up into three different categories. Under general, I don't need my teachers to see the dashboard and I don't want them to change their passwords. In fact, they can't. Google is going to take care of their passwords or Canvas or Schoology, one of those three, okay? Under teacher tools, we're gonna to give them permission to do everything except for maybe the bottom two. Now, if you are especially a securely filter user, you're not gonna need these bottom two because securely filter is so good and allows your teachers to manipulate the filter in their own classes. 
If you're using another content filter, you might want to be able to add this. And what this does is allow your teachers to turn off this blocked URL list that you have here or add URLs directly to that blocked URLs list just to kind of beef up your content filter. So we're going to allow our teachers to do screen lock, site lock, view screens, manage tabs, use announce, use hand raise, and use chat. And I'll be explaining these features when we get down to teacher tools. And then the last section we have is manage classes. Manage classes, that's a 50-50 shot here. If I turn it off like this, then whatever LMS you're using to sync in and integrations, that's where your teachers are going to have to use that to populate their classes, to roster their classes, to create their classes. Since I'm a, basically a Google Classroom school, if I turn that off in permissions, all my teachers are going to have to use Google Classroom to create their classes and or roster their classes. Okay. The last section here is manage web links. You always want to have that checked. This is kind of the crux of what we do in teacher tools and for the classroom product. We want those teachers to be able to create web links that they're going to be able to push out to their students. Once again, when I have it saved the way I want to, I just hit save. Well, you might be sitting there going, hey, David, I see the teacher role. I see technician. I see location admin. And I see organizational admin. What the heck does that mean? Well, this all correlates with our users that we have over here. I'm going to click over here on users, and you're going to see a lot of people here in our school that we have here. We have users that we've created manually. These are called, and I've created them as organizational admins. We also have a lot of teachers, and we brought them in through Google Classroom. I've got a Canvas teacher here. We brought even in some through Apple School Manager. Now, what does this do? Well, you can set a different permission set for different people in your school. So if I come back up here to settings, and let's say I've got kind of a uh, tech-savvy teacher, or I've got uh, someone that's, um, you know, my sidekick in the organizational admin department and the IT department. Well, I'm going to set them up and give them these sets of permissions. If I have an administrator, I might sit there and say, hey, I'm going to give my administrator permission to do everything in the system except for manage web links. My administrator doesn't need to delete and add web links, but they're going to be able to do this and they're going to be able to manage classes. This is really kind of a neat thing and I'll show you later. And if you let allow your administrators to do this, they can actually go in and look at a class while it's running and see what students are doing. Or they can look at the history of a class after it's been stopped. Really kind of a neat thing. So David, hey, how do I fix and how do I get these users into the right roles? Well, it's very easy here. I'm going to come over here to users. And if I click on any one of my users, so if I come over here and I say um, Maggie Duncan, and let's say Maggie Duncan ap actually happens to be a principal I can promote Maggie right here to a location admin, make sure that I have the location that she at is at check marked here, and I can hit save. Now Maggie turns into a location admin. She has a little bit more permissions than a teacher does, and she can do those things that they need to do. Very easy and very straightforward for them to do. Now let's talk about logging in. How do our teachers and different people log in? Well, if you remember at the beginning of all this, we went to deviceconsole.securely.com. And I'm going to do that over here. And I'm going to log out here, not here. Okay. And this is that login area. Now, this is, of course, I've got some saved passwords in here. But if I'm a teacher in the system that has been brought in by Google, I must use this sign in with Google button. If I try to put in my password, like if I come up here and I try to put in my credentials or anything, remember, Securely does not remember their passwords from Google. That's all stored in Google. 
So if I want to sign in as a teacher, I'm going to hit the sign in with Google button. And it's going to redirect stuff. I want to sign is in as band teacher. So I'm going to click on my credentials or I'm going to add my credentials there. And since it remembered me, now you see when I'm logged in, it remembers those permissions that I had set up here. And that's as all as I'm going to see as a teacher are those areas that I've been given permission to use. And I come over here and I'm going to be able to check my class and I'm going to be able to start my class. That's how we're going to manipulate our users and that's how users log in. <laughs>